All right, guys, um, today we're actually going to be talking about uh, valence electrons. You've seen that word in our vocabulary quizzes, so we need a scratch sheet of paper. On that scratch sheet of paper, actually title it. Valence electrons, just like that. And we're going to go through some of the basics, okay? Um, as I'm playing this, feel free to pause at any point to the sub. Hey, slow down, pause for a second, right, catch up, what's going on? All right, so number one, when dealing with valence electrons, there's a, a couple of key terms. The first is valence. The word valence almost literally means outside or outer, okay? So if I'm dealing with valence electrons, I'm dealing with electrons on the outside, okay? Well, you might think, well, all electrons on the outside. That doesn't make much sense. But when we deal with an atom, say we're dealing with, um, let's say, lithium. We've got three protons, we've got four neutrons, and then I've got some electron rings. First ring holds two. I've got three protons, so I've got to have three electrons because I'm eight, eight man. And then I get one electron. Now, when I'm dealing with valence electrons, the valence electrons are the electrons on the outside ring. On the last ring on the outside. So this one right here, that is a valence electron. So this atom has one valence electron. It's that one on the absolute outside. So if we were to actually define the words valence electrons, these are the electrons draw a couple of atom examples similar to this one, and y'all are just going to take a second and you're going to tell me how many valence electrons are actually on it. It's a piece. A new page here. So let's say I'm dealing with um, fluorine. Fluorine has nine protons and ten neutrons. If I have nine protons, that means I also need nine electrons. So one, two, my nine electrons. How many valence electrons do I have? I'll leave a blank right there. Fill it in. I'll draw another atom right here. Y'all draw it with me before you go back. Let's say, uh, for periodic table, let's choose another one. Let's say aluminum. Aluminum has 13 protons, 14 neutrons. Because I have 13 protons, 8. Protons equal electrons. I should have 13. One. Second ring, remember, can only hold eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That gives me a grand total of ten. One, two, three. So, how many electrons on that one? Give you just a second, try to write it down. Suspense. Good. Okay, it's outside ring, so it's just simple counting. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do I count these inside too? Nope. So the number of valence electrons, seven. When we abbreviate, you can just abbreviate it. Be seven be valence electron. Around me here. One, two, three. Only count ones on the outside. Three valence electrons. Easy peasy, right? Not hard. Okay. And here comes the slightly more difficult part. I'm going to ask the sub to pause right here. And then I want everyone to have a blank copy of the periodic table. So pass out a blank copy of the periodic table. Okay, now you've got your periodic tables. It should look something kind of like this. Okay, we're going to fill in some information on this. And this is actually the first step of something uh, the eighth grade science teachers called the periodic table of madness. We'll introduce this to you guys a little more in depth probably next week or the end of this week. But this is the first step of the periodic table of madness. When dealing with the periodic table, I want you to do exactly what I'm doing. We ignore 
an entire segment of the periodic table for some basic periodic table rules. Like we can use this segment for eight man and that kind of stuff, but when it comes to like valence electrons or reactivity, that kind of thing, we ignore them. This whole middle section right here is called the transition metals. We tend to ignore them. They follow very weird rules. Transition metals you'll worry about in high school. Okay? Now when we're dealing with valence electrons, remember that's our topic, the outside ring, the valence electrons. Remember when we did our Mr. X activity, we discovered that all of the atoms are also arranged by the number of valence electrons that they have. One column all has the same valence electrons. The second column all has the same valence electrons. And that's what's happening here. This entire column, the first column, we call these groups, the first group on the periodic table all has one valence electron. Add that to your periodic table. So it doesn't matter if I'm dealing with hydrogen, sodium, rubidium, every atom right here has one valence electron. Group two right here, all of these have two valence electrons. So magnesium, calcium, strontium, all of these have two valence electrons. Right over here, group 13, because we skipped the transition metals, group 13 all has three valence electrons. Good way to actually help you remember that, because it is group 13, if you just scribble out that one right there, that's how many valence electrons there are. And it's the same all the way down the line. So group 14, four valence electrons. Group 15, five valence electrons. Group 16, group 17, and group 18. Now, going through this, the only exception to the valence electrons, there's only one, is helium. Helium actually has two valence electrons. Why do you think that might be? Well, its atomic number is two, so that's two protons and two electrons. So even though all the rest of these have eight valence electrons, this one only has two. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means a little bit later when we get to like reactivity and how valence electrons determine how they react. <coughs> valence electrons in these columns mean that basically if they're in the same group, same up and down group, these guys are going to have very similar properties. So that means, if I were to circle two of them, sulfur and tellurium are extremely similar to each other. They look very similar, they behave very similar. Same thing over here. Calcium and barium, very similar to each other because they're in the same group, and that's because of the valence electrons. Okay? Now, Let's get just a couple more words to find. So you can go back to the page that we were writing on before about valence electrons. So I'll go back to this page. When dealing with the periodic table, we need to know the difference between groups and periods. This will be the last thing we write and then you're going to do some practice. Groups on the periodic table go up and down. So on the periodic table, elements in the same column. Okay, so on this one you can think up and down. Periods, again, on the, I'll abbreviate it, periodic table, elements in the same row. So think this way. And just jot this down, this will be more important later. When they're in groups, they are similar. Periods are different. Very important. All right. You should now know enough in order to do the practice for the rest of the period. So you have the remainder of the period to do as much of that as you can. Anything not done, homework.